Hello everyone, welcome back to the series called Finance Current Affairs, where we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. Before I start with the first question, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified about all our upcoming videos. If you want the free PDF of this session, then you can join the Telegram group. Link is in the description below. We provide the free PDFs on that very group only. Now let's move on to the first question. It says, RBI has set up a new internal fintech department from 4th January onwards. The new department has been created by subsuming the fintech division working under which department of RBI? So as of now, RBI has been focusing a lot on fintech. We'll be discussing about fintech further. So there was a division which was already working on fintech, but now RBI has created a separate internal department, which will be the fintech department dealing specifically in fintech related innov innovations. So as of now, under which department was the fintech division working? They are asking about that. Abhi tak fintech division kis department ke under work kar rahi thi, jis ke liye ab ek alag se department bana diya gaya hai. So the answer to this question is option A, Department of Payment and Settlement Systems. So let's first try and understand a bit about fintech. Then we'll then I'll give you a brief background about how the fintech division has been working as far as the RBI is concerned. So talking about fintech is it has been derived from two words, financial technology. So when there are some industries, when there are some entities which are offering the financial services using the technology, that is what we refer, refer to as fintech. So in the delivery of financial services, information technology is coming a lot in use these days. We are becoming reliant on technology, more digital platforms are emerging, more payment and settlement systems are coming up, which make use of technology. So fintech basically refers to that industry only where the financial services are rendered, where the financial products are offered using the aid of technology. So make, by making use of the technology to render the financial services, we are actually making the delivery of these financial services, of these financial products more efficient. Okay, so that is what is referred to as fintech. Now talking about the setting up of the fintech department. So taking in consideration the changing financial landscape, uh, how we have shifted more towards the digital platforms, many more innovations are needed in this very field. Okay, like we need to provide more financial services in the offline mode as well to the people in the rural areas, how digital payments can be available in the offline mode. So various innovations are taking place. There is RBI's innovation hub, the regulatory sandbox, which is inviting these types of suggestions, uh, doing the necessary incubation before launching the product in a larger scale. Okay, so considering the changed financial landscape, there is a need to focus a lot on fintech and that's the reason why RBI has set up a separate internal fintech department. Okay, uh, it will help in the innovation in the financial sector, keeping in mind the dynamically changing environment. Now, through this, the RBI will also focus on the regulations related to fintech. Innovation will focus on the new solutions, ke aao, better way mein financial services ki delivery ho sake, technology ka use karke, lekin saath hi saath jo bhi usko govern karne wale rules, regulations hai, supervision karna hai, wo sara kaam bhi fintech department ka hoga. Now talking about who is going to head this department. So if you remember recently I took one session where I told you that Mr. Ajay Kumar Chaudhary has been appointed as the executive director of RBI. So he has been promoted and appointed as the executive director of RBI and there also I mentioned you that he is going to head the department of fintech. So Mr. Ajay Kumar Chaudhary who is the executive director at RBI, he is going to head this department of fintech. Now, this department will further report to the RBI's Central Administrative Division. Now, coming to the brief background about the same. Abhi tak hamara fintech division kaise work karta hai. So, as of now in 2018, a fintech unit was set up under the Department of Regulation. Considering the importance of the technology used in rendering the financial services, a unit was set up and under which department was it set up? Department of Regulation. So, in 2018, the Department of Regulation was set up fintech unit. Set kiya gaya tha. But later on, it was 
ट्रांसफर टू द डी पी एस एस डेट इज द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम सो इस यूनिट को फर्दर डी पी एस एस के अंदर ट्रांसफर कर दिया गया था और एक फिनटेक की डिविजन बना दी गई थी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम के अंदर एंड नाउ अ सेपरेट डिपार्टमेंट इज बीन क्रिएटेड बाई सब्सिंग द फिनटेक डिविजन ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम सो बिकॉज द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम केम हेयर लेट्स डिस्कस वॉट्स द बेसिक रोल ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम देर आर डिफरेंट पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम वर्किंग इन इंडिया वी हैव दी एनी एफ टी ट्रांसफर वी हैव दी मोबाइल बैंकिंग देर इज यूज ऑफ डेबिट कार्ड क्रेडिट कार्ड डिफरेंट प्रीपेड पेमेंट इंस्ट्रूमेंट आर देर so what are all these all these are the payment and settlement systems of india now the role of the department of payment and settlement system is to make the necessary policies the rules regulations related to these systems to authorize the payment system operators to offer these kinds of services regulate these systems supervise them monitoring them that's the role of department of payment and settlement system so पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम्स की पॉलिसीज बनाने से लेके उसके रेगुलेशन सुपरविजन मॉनिटरिंग तक सारा काम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम का है सो एज ऑफ नाउ फिनटेक डिविजन वाज वर्किंग अंडर दिस डिपार्टमेंट बट नाउ अ सेपरेट इंटरनल डिपार्टमेंट हैज बीन क्रिएटेड फॉर द सेम फर्दर टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉट विल बी द रोल ऑफ दिस फिनटेक डिपार्टमेंट ये क्या करने वाला है डिपार्टमेंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट्स गोइंग टू प्रमोट द इनोवेशन इन दिनटेक सेक्टर सो हाउ वील बी रेंडरिंग द फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज यूजिंग द टेक्नोलॉजी बींग मोर रिलायंट ऑन टेक्नोलॉजी हाउ वी कैन मोर एफिशियंटली रेंडर फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज coming up with various solutions related to that will be the role of this department. It will encourage more ideas on fintech sector. it will provide the necessary incubation facility where first of all whenever a new idea comes up it will be tested before launching it in a larger scale in the market then it will be identifying the challenges and the opportunities that are associated in a timely manner so related to fintech various new opportunities might come up okay over time we have shifted a lot to the digital platform so new ideas are emerging various platforms are coming up but side by side there are major challenges also which need to be addressed like when you we are using the digital platforms there is high risk of cyber attack so how these challenges need to be dealt up with how the new opportunities can be encashed all that will be taken care by the fintech department it will also provide the framework where further research can be carried out related to the matter it will facilitate the innovations and the incubations of the fintech sector as i have just discussed and all the matters that relate to the inter regulatory coordination or internal coordination will also be dealt by the department so when some new fintech solution is coming up for which uh, the coordination is required within different levels within the department or uh, coordination is required with other regulatory bodies which are existing so fintech department will take care about all that as well so dusre departments ke sath dusri regulatory bodies ke sath कोऑर्डिनेशन करना है विद इन द फिनटेक डिपार्टमेंट अलग अलग लेवल्स है जिनमें कोऑर्डिनेशन इंश्योर करना है वो सारा रोल होगा फिनटेक डिपार्टमेंट का सो दिस वाज ऑल अबाउट द फिनटेक डिपार्टमेंट नाउ कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो इट सेज हु विल हेड द फिनटेक डिपार्टमेंट सेट अप बाय आरबीआई इन जून 2022 सो वी जस्ट डिस्कस दैट द Uh, that Ajay Kumar Chaudhary, Mr. Ajay Kumar Chaudhary, has been appointed as the executive director who will be heading this department. So, answer is option B. Now, coming to the next question and the next topic of the day. It says, in what could make the transactions through Aadhaar enabled payment systems more standardized and uh, help customer? The NPCI has introduced the limits. for cash withdrawals and mini statements on the aeps transactions which of the following correctly states those limits so we have the aadhaar enabled payment system working and the transactions which are happening through them uh, npci has introduced certain limits for that so let's first discuss the concept of aeps and what are the um, new guidelines which npci has come up with in that regard then we'll come back to the question and answer it so what has npci done it has introduced some limits on the number of cash withdrawals which you are making through the aeps or the mini, mini statements which you are extracting through the aeps so in order to make the system more standardized so that different banks follow similar system the npci has introduced these limits 
सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू शुड बी क्लियर अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ए पी एस ए पी एस क्या है ए पी एस स्टैंड फॉर द आधार इनेबल्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम सो एन पी सी आई विच इज द रेगुलेट विच इज द अम्ब्रेला बॉडी वी कैन से विच डील्स विद द रेगुलेट विच डील्स विद द रिटेल पेमेंट सिस्टम इन इंडिया वी हैव द यू पी आई सिस्टम वी हैव द ए पी एस सिस्टम वी हैव द आई एम पी एस सिस्टम सो द अम्ब्रेला बॉडी विच इज डीलिंग इन ऑल दीज इज द एन पी सी आई ऑल दीज रिटेल सिस्टम रिटेल पेमेंट सिस्टम में जो डील करती है सो इन्होंने एक रिटेल पेमेंट सिस्टम इंट्रोड्यूस किया था दी आधार इनेबल्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम लेट एस try and understand this system through an example suppose there is a person who is residing in a rural area now that person needs to travel long distance to reach any bank and get the basic transactions done a bank might be located far away from that village area so a person if even he wants to transfer small amount of money to someone else or withdraw a small amount of cash or just get the mini statement he needs to visit that long distance and approach a bank to do such transactions so to avoid that thing the concept of business correspondents came into picture business correspondents are the agents of the banks who are located in those areas where there are no bank branches where there are no atms so that the customers can easily get the uh, banking services through those agents when the banks are located far away so we have the business correspondents jinke paas hum ja ke paise withdraw kar sakte hain deposit kar sakte hain mini statement le sakte hain these business correspondents have a device and through that device the transactions get done device just like we have a machine where we swap uh, we swap our debit card we have for pay, making the payments whenever we visit any store similar kind of machine is there with the business correspondents and they provide us these banking services now APS is a an aadhar enabled system it's a bank led model where what we can do is that if we have a aadhar authenticated account then we can go to a business correspondent we can give him our aadhar number we can tell him our bank giving him aadhar number and giving the fingerprint the biometric identification we can get different transactions done so hum business correspondent ke paas jaake karenge ki hamara is bank mein account hai ye hamara aadhar number hai and uh, we are willing to give you the fingerprint so us machine mein jab aap aadhar number type karoge fingerprint doge and you will tell them that we want the transaction like we want to withdraw cash we want to deposit cash or we want the mini statement the transaction will get proceeded even if that business correspondent is of one particular bank then also if your account is in some other bank you can get the transaction done aap us business correspondent se jo ho sakta hai pnb ka ho aur aapka account sbi mein hai to bhi aap wo transaction us business correspondent ke through kara sakte ho provided that you have a aadhar enabled account okay so there is interoperability which exists where there is so where you can get the transactions done through the business correspondent of any bank आपको बस बैंक का नाम आधार नंबर और फिंगरप्रिंट देना होगा और आप ये सारी ट्रांजैक्शंस कर सकते हो लाइक डिपॉजिटिंग कैश विड्रॉइंग कैश इंटर बैंक ट्रांसफर करने हैं यू विल प्रोवाइड योर आधार नंबर एंड द आधार नंबर ऑफ द पर्सन टू यू वांट टू ट्रांसफर एंड द ट्रांजैक्शंस कैन हैपन सो यूजिंग आधार एज दथेंटिकेशन सोर्स यू कैन एक्चुअली एक्सेस द बैंकिंग सर्विसेज दिस इज होल सिस्टम ऑफ ए पी एस और राइट नाउ वॉट हैज एन done coming to that first of all you need to understand two terms which i'll be using that is the acquirer bank and the issuer bank so like i told you that a person might have an account with sbi but he might approach a business correspondent of say pnb having a machine of pnb device of pnb through which you are getting a transaction done so the acquirer bank is the bank whose machine whose infrastructure whose device is being used by the business correspondent okay so jis bank ka device use ho raha hai jo necessary infrastructure provide kar raha hai jisse through customer kisi aur bank ka hote hue bhi services le pa raha hai that is the acquirer bank and the bank where the customer has the aadhar enabled account that bank is the issuer bank okay so this is what has been explained over here as well now what has npci guided it has told the acquiring banks that they need to implement a maximum limit of 5 approved cash withdrawal transactions per customer per terminal per day so ek din mein ek customer jo hai wo business correspondent ke paas ja ke maximum 5 cash withdrawals kar sakta hai usse zyada nahi so why this limit has been introduced 
Now these acquirer banks are providing their devices, they are providing their infrastructure to the customers of other banks as well. So for this, they will be taking some amount, charging some amount from the issuer banks. So issuer banks do hai interchange fee pay karenge in acquirer banks ko. Now these acquirer banks are offering the services to the customers using whom? Using the business correspondence. So business correspondence will ask for commission. Now this commission is paid on the basis of number of transactions happening. So what they used to do, the business correspondents deliberately used to split a single transaction into multiple transactions so that they can get more commission. One transaction only is suppose 1,000 rupees, so they split it in parts and split it in 4-5 transactions or split it in one transaction and split it in 2-3 transactions so that they have multiple transactions for which they will get a lot of commission. So to prevent this, this limit has been introduced that maximum per day per terminal per customer only 5 cash withdrawals can happen. Alright, second guideline from NPCIS end is to put a limit on the cash withdrawal, uh, on the cash withdrawal transactions for the issuers. So issuers will implement a standardized limit of minimum 5 approved cash withdrawal transactions per month for every customer. Now, what were banks doing? There are different banks. They were having different limits that this is this much are the cash withdrawal transactions which we'll be providing for free. Beyond this, we will be charging you some money. Her bank ki apni ek policy hoti thi ki hum do transactions free denge, uske baad hum charge karenge, uske baad hum cash withdrawal ka option nahi denge, teen tak free denge. So, in order to standardize to so that all the banks follow similar system, this has been introduced. Issuer banks have introduced a limit that every customer can do 5 cash withdrawals per month. Okay, beyond that, a bank might deny providing such service or if the bank is providing, he might be, that bank might be charging some fee. So, a few of large acquiring banks were having lower limits for the number of cash withdrawals. So, to standardize it, this has been done. So, alag -alag banks alag -alag limit na set kare, iske liye set kar diya ki paanch cash withdrawals ho sakte hai, uske beyond, ek month mein agar koi customer cash withdraw karna chata hai, to ya to usko wo transaction decline kar denge bank, ya fir uske liye alag se fee charge ki jayegi. Similar thing has been done for the, uh, for your mini statements as well, that five minimum transactions are allowed per month per customer. Then two-factor authentication has been introduced for the business correspondents, agents and all for enhanced security. So acquirers must implement a two-factor authentication. Means, two times you have authentication. Hoga. Like when the business correspondents or the agents of the banks, they are logging in. First of all, they need to provide the ID password. This is first authentication. Secondly, they will also require to provide the Aadhaar-based biometric identification so that the transact, the their login gets authenticated. That they are proper people who authenticate. Proper log hai jo wo service provide kar rahe hai. Authenticity ke liye, enhanced security ke liye, do bar aapko apna proof dena hoga ki first of all we are correct, we are the agents as we are providing the correct login and ID and then uh, Aadhaar based biometric identification will also be done. So this is all what NPCI has asked the issuers and the acquirer banks. Coming back to our question, we have to identify the correct limits. So abhi humne dekha 5 Cash withdrawals, 5 mini statement per customer per month is the limit. So, which option states those? It's option, it's statement 2 and statement 4. So, answer is option D, second and fourth. Now, coming to the last question. So, this is, uh, before coming to that, this is what NPCI has notified. If you go to NPCI ki website, pe jauge, you will go there, you will find this, that there were already circulars which came up earlier uh, related to these guidelines only and now, NPCI has asked to implement them by these timelines. Alright, so now coming to the last question that says, what does CIS stands for? So here we have a concept explained below and we have to identify the full form of CIS. CIS is any scheme or arrangement made or offered by any company which pools the contributions or payments by the investors and deploys the same. It's a pool investment vehicle in the closed-ended investment space, making investments more to plantations and real estate. So you all must be aware about the concept of the mutual funds. What happens in case of a mutual fund? The money is pooled, okay, it's collected from different investors and then that money is invested in different securities, equity, bond and all. Similar is the CIS also. CIS is also, we can say, a scheme or an arrangement where the money is pooled and then it is invested elsewhere. 
although there is a slight difference between a mutual fund and a cis which which is basically where that money is invested jo cis hai na wo zyada se zyada money uh, agro bonds mein plantation bonds mein plantation sector mein real estate sector mein invest karte hain whereas if we talk about mutual funds they prefer more the equity market the security markets the bonds and all okay so where that money is invested that is the factor on which usually the cis differs from a mutual fund otherwise ye ek similar type of a scheme hai there are various options available where the money is pooled and then it's invested okay so mutual fund is one and the cis is other the cis stands for the collective investment scheme from the very name the role is clear that the money is collected and then it's invested so answer is option c now talking a bit about it so recently sebi has released a consultation paper where it reviews the existing regulations on collective investment scheme lastly the collective investment scheme regulations came up in 1999 and since then a lot of amendments have not come up with to improve this very this very investment option so 1999 में जो ये रेगुलेशन आई थी इसमें फर्दर ज्यादा इंप्रूवमेंट नहीं किए गए हैं जिसको रिव्यू करने के लिए अब सेबी ने कंसल्टेशन पेपर निकाला है इट हैज सजेस्टेड सम गाइडलाइंस टू बी फॉलोड बाय द सीआईएस स्कीम्स एंड इफ द सो इट हैज बेसिकली इनवाइटेड द कमेंट्स वंस द कमेंट कम अप द सेबी विल लेटर टेक ऑन द फाइनल डिसीजन एज टू इम्प्लीमेंट दीज गाइडलाइंस और नॉट अभी के लिए जो सेबी के प्रपोजल से हम वो डिस्कस करेंगे अगर लोगों के कमेंट्स ऐसे आते हैं जिससे सेबी को ये लगता है कि दे आर गुड इनफ रेगुलेशंस टू गेट इम्प्लीमेंटेड देन सेबी विल इम्प्लीमेंट देम सो कलेक्टिव इन्वेस्टमेंट स्कीम वी हैव जस्ट डिस्कस मोर ऑफ मोर और लेस लाइक अ म्यूचुअल फंड वेयर मनी इज पुल्ड बट इट्स इन्वेस्टेड मेजरली इन दी प्लांटेशन और दी रियल इस्टेट सेक्टर सो देर इज नो मिनिमम अमाउंट विच यू कैन इन्वेस्ट इन दिस स्कीम okay and that's the reason why a lot of retail investors are attracted towards this investment option now coming up to the objective of this consultation paper sebi q review kar raha hai ye guidelines okay it wants to strengthen the regulatory framework of the scheme first of all secondly who manages the scheme there is a collective investment management company jaise ki asset management company hoti hai mutual funds ke case mein we have a collective investment management company in case of cis and it uh, organizes operates and manages that collective investment scheme so that very body can effectively discharge its duties it can work efficiently towards the interest of investors to have a good regulatory framework for collective investment scheme this consultation paper has been introduced more or less the major reason behind the same is to align the regulations like with that of the mutual fund mutual fund regulations came up in 1996 before cis lekin over time isme bahut si amendments hui hai over time this mutual fund regulations have gone various gone through various amendments keeping in mind the changed business landscape the changed financial landscape more regulatory uh, more regulations have come up with for the mutual funds mutual funds mein humne kafi improvements kiye hain to increase their transparency to ensure better regulation but the cis regulations have not been reviewed for a long time now and that's the reason why when mutual funds are better regulated with the cis people will prefer going to mutual funds so to prevent that regulatory arbitrage yahan regulations proper nahi hai wahan hai to log वो प्रेफर करेंगे वो सेफर इंस्ट्रूमेंट लगेगा उन्हें टू प्रिवेंट दैट टू अलाइन द सी आई एस रेगुलेशन विद द रेगुलेशन ऑफ द म्यूचुअल फंड दिस कंसल्टेशन पेपर हैज बीन रिलीज वेर सेबी हैज कम अप विद वेरियस प्रपोजल नाउ लेट सी वॉट वर द एग्जिस्टिंग प्रोविजन एंड वॉट हैज सेबी प्रपोज सो हम म्यूचुअल फंड को और सी आई एस को कंपेयर करेंगे कि म्यूचुअल फंड में क्या रेगुलेशन है जो सी आई एस में नहीं है और सेबी चाहता है कि वो अब वो प्रोविजन अब सी आई एस में भी आए first is related to the track record and the net worth of the cis in case of a mutual fund the sponsor what that what the sponsor requires is to have a 5 year of financial experience to have positive net worth to have profitability in 3 out of the 5 years okay whereas no such track record is required for the cimc in case of cis so jo aapki collective investment scheme ke under management company hai unko ye track record ki zarurat nahi hai moreover the net worth requirement for a, in case of a mutual fund is 50 crores and uh, it's a minimum of 100 crores the sponsor is not meeting the profitability criteria but such is not in case of cis in cis it's just 3 crores which is is increased to 5 crores in certain cases 
So, in order to align the CIS regulations which mutual with mutual funds, what has SEBI proposed? SEBI ne proposed kiya hai that the CIA, in case of CIS also, the CIMC should have a five-year experience, okay, not less than that. It should have a positive net worth. It should have profits in three out of the five years and its minimum net worth should be 50 crores. So, jo aapke mutual funds ke under sponsors ke liye track record or net worth ke requirements, these similar have, have been proposed for the CIMC under the collective investment schemes as well. So, this is the first proposal. Second is related to the conflict of interest. So, in case of a mutual fund, there was a cap which was imposed on the asset management company. And that was that that asset management company cannot have 10% or more shareholding in any other AMC. So, the asset management company has its company, the shareholders ki shareholding has its shareholding in the competitor AMC. Mein nahi honi but no such provision was there in case of a CIS. So, shareholders holding 10% or more of the shareholding in the AMC shall not have 10% or more shareholding in another AMC. These were the restrictions imposed to avoid the conflict of interest kinds of situations. So, SEBI has now proposed that a cap on the cross shareholding should also be there in case of CIS. So, CIS ke case may be CIMC may jinki shareholding hai, unki 10% ya usse zyada holding kisi or CIMC may nahi honi chahiye. This is what SEBI has proposed. Now coming to the third proposal that is related to the alignment of interest. Now we have discussed this various times about the skin in the game that in order to make sure that the company which is creating the mutual fund, the sponsor of that mutual fund is actually taking care and properly managing that fund in the interest of the investors. So for that the asset management company themselves need to invest certain money in the scheme. The key managerial persons uh, need to in of those AMCs need to their salary will also be invested in the scheme. So no such provision is there in case of CIS. Jo log asset Com, jo us mutual fund ko manage kar rahe hai, us asset management company, us asset management company ke key managerial persons ko bhi kuch amount us mutual fund scheme mein invest karna hoga. This was rule because uh, it, it's important to make sure that those people are regulating the fund in a proper manner in the best interest of investors. Agar unka bhi paisa laga hoga us mein, to wo aur dhyan se us mutual fund ko invest karenge. Thik hai? So no such rule was there in case of CIS. So SEBI has proposed that the CIMC and its key employees, okay, they should have an interest not less than 2.5% or 5 crore, whichever is lower in the form of investment in CIS and 20% of the salary of the designated employees of CIMC will be mandatorily invested in the CIS. So, ab in ki bhi skin in the game hogi hai, SEBI ne propose kiya hai. Coming to the last set of proposal that relates to the minimum subscription and minimum number of investors. So, mutual in case of mutual funds, the minimum subscription is 10 crores for equity scheme, 20 for the 20 crore for the debt schemes, and the minimum of 20 investors are required in case of a mutual fund, and maximum one investor can have up to 25% of the investment. No such limits were there in case of CIS. So, in order to avoid that all the major holding of the fund goes to a particular investor or a few investor, there is a need to have a minimum number of investors. So for CIS also, SEBI has proposed having minimum 20 investors and no single investor should account for more than 25% of the assets under management of the scheme. So sare hi paisa ek hi particular individual ya kuch individual investors ke paas na ho, isi liye ek, ek scheme mein minimum 20 investors are required and one investor cannot have more than 25% of the assets. Secondly, a minimum subscription for that scheme of 20 crores is required. These are the proposals from the SEBI's end. Now coming back to the question, so we have already discussed that which scheme is being talked about over here, it's the collective investment scheme. This was all for today's session, I hope it was useful for you all. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.